What will happen when a massive supernova explodes in our galaxy soon? Will we all be annihilated then? The red giant star, Betelgeuse, is about to have its final event. In a superlative cosmic explosion, the star will inflate one last time and then collapse forever. A powerful shock wave will travel through the cosmos and the radiation will destroy everything in the vicinity of the giant. But what effects can we expect on Earth and when exactly will this event take place? We're looking into it. Stay tuned if you want to be up to date and don't want to miss this important event. Is Betelgeuse our downfall? Our sun is big, but Betelgeuse is huge. The red supergiant so big that if placed in our own solar system, it would reach as far as Jupiter's orbit. We have all seen the star, consciously or unconsciously. It's one of the brightest stars of the constellation Orion and one of the brightest stars in the whole night sky. If you look very closely, you can even see the reddish color and a slight flicker. The color resembles Mars, but unlike the red planet, Betelgeuse does not wander across the night sky. It remains firmly in its position, in the shoulder of Orion's constellation. What unsuspecting observers of the night sky cannot guess is that this star is so massive and luminous because it is dying. For millions of years, it has ballooned into a giant star. The fuel is running out, and soon the star will perish and in a brilliant final act. The explosion will last only a fraction of a second, and then tremendous physical forces will tear the star apart. A brightly shining dust disk will remain, and eventually only a cosmic nebula of unusual beauty, a neutron star, or a black hole will be left. If we combined all the bombs and explosives of Earth, we could never even come close to the forces that Betelgeuse will release when it explodes in the final event and then disappears. The blast wave, swarms of highly charged neutrinos, and violent radiation will annihilate everything within 50 light years. We will also feel this event on Earth, and the time may come at any moment. Some experts have predicted the explosion for the year 2023. Do we have to expect serious effects here? And how can we predict the explosion? Betelgeuse is behaving strangely. Experts are worried. Betelgeuse has already been behaving strangely since 2019. Its brightness rhythmically increases and decreases. This dimming could be a harbinger of the explosion. For a long time, it looked as if the giant star was increasingly unstable and the supernova was imminent. Long-term observations showed recently that the star has regained its old luminosity. Betelgeuse has probably undergone a massive surface ejection, losing a significant portion of its visible surface. It's true that our sun also regularly releases parts of its thin outer atmosphere, the corona. But these coronal mass ejections are tiny compared to the events on Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse ejected 400 billion times more mass than is usual for an average coronal mass ejection from our star. The dimming probably came from a cloud of hot gas. Although this explains the light fluctuations, experts continue to warn that the changes should not be taken lightly. Betelgeuse could still explode at any moment. The last time a supernova appeared in our Milky Way was in 1604, and it's possible that there have been other nearby supernovae since then, and we haven't seen them hidden behind atmospheric gas and dust. It's bizarre. But we can't see all corners of our galaxy because of the curvature of our galaxy and the cloud of dust that passes through it. In fact, it's often much easier for scientists to look into much more distant alien galaxies than to observe our own accurately. In 1987, a supernova called 1987A exploded in our neighboring galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. There have also been a large number of recent supernova explosions in other galaxies that have been observed with telescopes. So it's been a while since humans last observed a stellar explosion in our galaxy. So scientists can't wait until they finally see a massive supernova with their own eyes and study it in their own galaxy. Are we safe? When Kepler became the first astronomer in modern times to observe a supernova in 1604, the event was visible to the naked eye on Earth. Kepler himself did not witness the explosion. He didn't notice the supernova until a new starburst appeared in the night sky. 
The event was observed around the globe on October 9, 1604, and quite a few natural scientists of that era left records. The supernova was visible as a very bright spot in the night sky for two to three weeks and was generally interpreted as a new star or as a guest star that just appeared in our firmament and then disappeared again. At the moment of explosion, a supernova reaches a brightness exceeding the luminosity of all stars in the galaxy. The day or night is brightly illuminated for a fraction of an instant. After only a tiny instant, the flash is gone and an unusually large and bright glow is seen in the sky. The Kepler supernova was most likely a Type 1 explosion, which means that a white dwarf star exploded. Supernovae of this type reach a very high luminosity and are visible over large distances. Betelgeuse will most likely pass away in a Type 2 explosion after illuminating the entire galaxy for a tiny moment. The disk of gas and debris left behind will be visible for several weeks as a bright glowing spot in the exact location where the star was before. On Earth, we will feel further effects from this event, but scientists warn Betelgeuse is much too far away to become a serious danger to us. The Old Man is Running Out of Air Many years ago, Henry Neely, a lecturer at Hayden Planetarium in New York, studied Betelgeuse and concluded that the final stage had long since been reached. Neely characterized the star as an old man whose power is almost completely spent, gasping for breath. At the center of stars, hydrogen and helium fuse to produce energy. A star's energy output increases dramatically when its core has accumulated enough heavy helium. As a result, the star expands into a red giant or supergiant. To counteract the relentless pressure of gravity, the cores of such stars produce heavy elements such as iron. However, the production of heavy elements also consumes an ever-increasing amount of energy. The star's days are numbered once the core begins to produce iron, and in the case of Betelgeuse, this state has long been reached. However, 100, 500, or 1,000 years in the last moments of a star's life is no more than a breath. For us humans, these are lifespans, and so we cannot know if people alive today will live to see the star's brilliant end. Betelgeuse is 640 light-years away from us. This means that the light from this place to us will take 640 years to reach us. Consequently, the worrisome light show and the huge mass ejection we could observe now happened 640 years ago. Maybe Betelgeuse has already exploded and we will see this only in 10, 50, or even 500 years. If the supernova has already occurred, Large amounts of debris and radiation have already been emitted into space. These deadly relics of the star also spread out furiously, but nothing is as fast as light. Regarding the debris and the worst rays, we need not worry. These will hardly reach us on Earth. Betelgeuse is too far away for that. Nevertheless, we will be able to measure neutrino currents on Earth. It will take centuries for them to reach us, and they will have lost most of their deadly charge by then. The radiation wave of gamma rays and X-rays will cause great destruction only in the immediate vicinity of Betelgeuse. On Earth, we are safe from these effects. Scientists emphasize that we must be aware that supernovae do not only emit dangerous elements and radiation into space. All the elements that made up the star are emitted into space in a finely pulverized form. Elements like iron, gold, but also gases are scattered into space and these substances are distributed slowly and over eons in the whole galaxy. Other celestial bodies and star-forming regions suck in such raw materials and use them to form new stars and planets. Are there any nearby supernovae in the Milky Way that could harm us? The danger of supernovae should never be underestimated, but scientists are optimistic. There are hardly any stars in our near vicinity that are large enough to explode as supernovae. Smaller stars usually do not evolve to supernova. They have used up their fuel, shrink, and eventually become dark, lifeless celestial bodies. A single star system 159 light years away could eventually be Earth's undoing. The binary system will also certainly end up as a massive type one supernova one day. In this system, one star pulls the matter of the other into itself until the partner has become a white dwarf. 
due to the enormous gravitational interaction between the two stars. This white dwarf will not burn up silently, but will go down in a spectacular Type 1 supernova. If this happens 159 light years away, humans and all life on Earth could feel the effects. A massive flood of high energy neutrinos would increasingly impact organic life in our star system. The arrival of the shockwave would be powerful enough to completely destroy our atmosphere and even our oceans. After the explosion, the star would grow progressively brighter for nearly three weeks, casting shadows even during the day. The UV and gamma rays from the superheated gas layer of the supernova would be deadly to organic life. The ozone layer would be destroyed by these rays, creating a smog of nitrogen oxide. A toxic mixture of X-rays, gamma rays, and ultraviolet rays would change our home forever. Humans could survive such a phase only deep underground. Presumably, life on Earth would eventually recover only in a completely altered form. Experts believe it is very possible that a mass extinction at the end of the Devonian age about 360 million years ago was due to a supernova explosion in our cosmic environment. When the binary system will perform this final dance is unknown at this time. It may take many millions of years, and whether we humans will still exist then is questionable. Do you feel completely safe in view of such processes in the cosmos? Or do pictures like these give you goosebumps?